So joining us uh, right now uh, is Gerald Salente. And uh, Gerald, uh, tell us exactly where you are in Ireland and what you're doing over there. Uh, Alex, I'm in Dublin, Ireland at the One World Chronicle Conference. And I just flew in from Munich uh, two days ago. And I want to let you know that in Germany and in Ireland, everyone has been telling me, when you talk to I, uh, Alex, tell him what great fans we are. Wow, very, very humbling. And I want to say hi to the uh, hundreds of thousands of people that are tuning in one way or another right now just to this special internet transmission. So uh, thank you, Gerald. And, and and uh, say that I'd love to drink a pint with all those great men and women there uh, in the background. He said he would love to have a pint with all of you great men and women over there in the background. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm glad we decided to do this. Uh, again, Gerald, tell us what you're doing over in Ireland and then uh, give us your call. I know you've been saying Obama for months and it's neck and neck, but a lot of the pundits are saying Looks like four more years of, of uh, the man of peace who's launching all these wars. Well, what I'm doing, I was just at a medals conference in Munich and the One World Chronicle conference over here in Ireland. They have a number of issues that they're dealing with. Uh, one of them, of course, is the bailouts of the banks, which are totally illegal. They're just taking the money from the people and giving them to the banks. when there's actually been no deal made at all between the banks that you know, knew what their risk would be and then shaking down the people for all the money. So there's a real, you know how I've been talking, Alex, about direct democracy? Well, Direct Democracy Ireland is taking hold. Directdemocracy.ie. The people are fed up with it. They, look, look what's going on in the states. As you know, this is the first time I have not voted in an election. Who could call this a democratic election? These clowns can't even count the votes. The whole game is rigged. The systems are breaking down. The people in Ireland are feeling it. They want no part of it anymore, and they're ready to rise up against it. And so what we're, what's, I'm over here talking about is the collapse of the currencies, the breakup of the European unit, Union eventually, but more importantly, Ireland joining with Switzerland to start moving forth with true democracy where the people will have the right to vote rather than it being controlled by the gangs that are controlling it now. Wow. Uh, we've talked to some of our reporters here in Austin and polling places, like you just said, are broken down, not working. We're getting reports of, of things flipped from Obama to Romney, Romney to Obama. Um, you, we're like eight days into the hurricane on the East Coast, where, where you'd normally be, Gerald. Uh, and uh, still, you know, government can't and won't help the people. Uh, wh where do you see this insanity going? It's collapsing. The collapse is around us. You know what no one's talking about with New York? And you know me, I'm a Bronx, New Yorker. I know the gig. The entire infrastructure of the United States is in collapse. And you get all these big mouth politicians over there shooting off their fat traps saying about how we're going to be there for the people and don't forget that we're there for you. The entire United States infrastructure is collapsing. We know the data coming out from the engineers that are saying it's going to cost an estimated $13 trillion just to get the thing back on track. That doesn't mean moving it into the 21st century. The entire nation is in collapse. And here's something else, Alex that the prostitutes are not talking about. They're saying that an estimated 35 to 40 percent of the people already voted, correct? Yes. All right, now, what imbecile believes that these clowns don't know what the vote count is? This is the mafia, let's get this straight. They know what the vote count is. This whole game is rigged. What three-year-old does not believe that 40%, 35% of the people have already voted, and no one knows. It's a secret. We promise. Scouts honor. Who are they kidding? So you're predicting, though, that in this whole war of the puppets, we're going to get Obama for four more years? That's still what you're predicting? Yeah, I would. I, this is not one of the ones that I'm going to base my reputation on, because, again, Anything could go in a totally 
corrupt government. Let's remember who we're talking about so nobody misunderstands this. This is the same government where George W. Bush, hey, haven't seen him on the campaign trail. What happened, you know? How come he's not out there like Bill Clinton? Because this is the same war criminal that lied the country into war. Of course they're going to lie about anything. They'll steal votes, they'll kill your son, they'll rob your money, they'll do anything that they can. Who's going to win the election? Whatever group of criminals could be the best criminal on the block. I look at these headlines, CBS, we covered this earlier today, video uh, showing electronic voting machines changing the vote. People now know what to look for. You know, Gerald, just 12 years ago or so, I would see national polls where less than 10% of people believe there was election fraud. Now it's 80, 90% depending on the poll. So people are getting more wise. They may get apathetic and just give up, but the point is at least people know uh, that the corruption is getting worse and worse and the system's answer to that's a bigger police state but what's it going to help the police if their pensions are no good either how do you see these uh you know, regardless of wh you know, which new puppet gets in which new distraction gets in where do you see things going now uh here in the west with, with some of the developments in the economy militarily hillary's now saying uh, in uh, uh, the news today that we've got to go into syria because al-qaeda is there and the media doesn't say, wait, the State Department and NATO put them there. I mean, it, it's things have reached an absurdist level that I can't even believe now. I mean, it's, it's really entering cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs zone. Let's talk about the wars, first of all. What's not, what's not making the news much is China and Japan going at it, thanks to the United States. You remember what I've said, how you keep playing back, you know, Great Depression, currency wars, trade wars, world war. The trade wars are heating up. The United States lost in Afghanistan. They lost in Iraq. They're destabilizing now Syria. They've already destroyed Libya. They're moving wars now into Mali and North Africa. And now they're refocusing into Southeast Asia. And now China and Japan are heating up. The world is heading to a war. Before I go further, I want to go back on a solution. We've been hearing about this voting fraud every damn election. Every damn election. Why wouldn't people think there's voter fraud? Because we have two frauds fronting pretending to be president. We have frauds that are fronting playing to be congressmen and senators. The whole system is a fraud. Here is what I suggest. I keep suggesting it over and over again. Alex, they move trillions of dollars a day around the globe. Rarely are the banking systems hacked. If we could bank online, we can vote online. There's only one reason why they don't want us to vote online. The reason is it would show that the people won't vote for them. That's the reason they're keeping it away, because we could have full transparency because of all the computer minds out there being able to figure out the algorithms so that when cheating starts, everybody can see it. It would be totally transparent. This is the United States of America. These clowns spend over a trillion dollars a year on defense and defense-related expenditures. Who are they BSing when they say, oh, the voting systems are broken down? Could you pull up your zipper? Could you tie your shoes? The folks over in Ireland don't like what they're hearing. Sure, instead we've got these computer systems that are all compartmentalized and secret and, and then they engage in fraud. The problem is any system, I think they're going to engage in fraud. I see your point about internet voting, getting everybody involved. My issue is, is that we went back to paper ballots counted at the precinct in front of everyone, then the numbers posted, then everything can be publicly put together and then integrated via computer, but then it can all be fact-checked right there at the grassroots. Uh, I agree but with that as well. I agree 100%, but they're not going to do that. 
Again, this is the global age. Everything is moving in this direction. People are hooked on their I this and I that, I pad, I, you know, they, everything they have in their hand. They can't vote. You know, let's make this real. And again, have full transparency, total transparency for everyone to monitor it. Because the numbers don't lie. The liars lie. The whole game is rigged. They, as I said, they rob our money, they rob us of our lives, and now the great United States of America, these BS artists that are always talking about exporting democracy, you don't even have it at home. You can't even vote for one of the two criminal groups. The time has never been better than now, and I'll tell you why. You mentioned earlier that years ago, when you say 12 years ago, 10 years ago, there was voter fraud, people wouldn't believe it. And then eight years, a couple of more people did start believing it. And as it keeps moving forward, and then you mentioned the, the numbers, 80 to 90 percent of the people believe it. You look at the numbers of how many people no longer believe in government, in Congress. What is it, like 16 or 17 percent of the people believe in Congress? And those are the flunkies that work for them and have the federal jobs. That's why they believe. Sure, they, some numbers some numbers are as low as 9% approval rating for Congress. 9% approval rating for Congress. Now, here's the point. The vacuum has never been larger. It could be filled with anything. The void is there. You have an empty suit and, and a uh, stuffed shirt that's vying for the White House. How transparent can it be? It could be filled with anything. And my message is, let's fill it with greatness, the greatness of the people, the spirit of the people, the dignity of the people, the courage of the people, the respect of the people, the integrity of the people, and the passion of the people. Those are unstoppable values that the politicians are defenseless against. That's what I believe, and that's why I say the time is now. All right, well, listen, uh, again, Gerald, thank you so much. Obviously, we love having you on. You are hands down uh, our listeners' favorite guests. There's a lot of great ones we have on Great Minds, men and women. You're my mother's favorite guest, and I salute you and thank you for, for staying up uh, late. And uh, uh, seriously, uh, you know, uh, tell all those folks that uh, we just appreciate them, and I wish I was there with you right now. Uh, and in closing, anything else, Gerald Salente, you'd like to add from Dublin? I think that's about it, Alex. And Alex said he wishes he was here with you. Looks forward to coming and visit you and said that the reason that his number one in all of the countries with the highest rating is because the Irish people are among the most awake. Absolutely, absolutely. We just showed those numbers. Very interesting. All right, uh, Gerald Salente, uh, give, give out your website one more time. Trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com. And Alex, thanks for all you're doing and thanks for having me on tonight. All the best. Explain as a former, now retired, top stockbroker, inventor of virtual trading. Uh, I mean, describe in the technicals, Max Kaiser, why the markets did this and why you're saying the markets, commodities, gold, silver, and other things going up, why that signifies a big win for the man who brought us the Obama phone. You're right in that bookies in Europe are paying out on an Obama win already. They started doing that yesterday. That's how, that's how certain they are of an Obama win, that they're paying out on, on those bets. Uh, I believe it was Patty Power or one of the other bookies. That was Patty that, Power and a bunch of others, yeah, that was. Okay, so they're already paying out on, on, the, uh, on this bet because the, um, the, 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 the commodities markets, the gold market and the stock market to a large degree, they want more of the same. They want more quantitative easing because it's clear that Obama is going to create more gridlock and there's going to be massive money printing and there's going to be more of the same in this massive banking crisis, which is yet to show its final comeuppance. Because the system knows what Obama and his crew is going to do. So this signifies, uh-oh, this means the 
inflationary uh, move. Uh, it's, it's, it's not that Romney would even keep his promises. It's just they know the quantifiable power structure of Obama, and uh, they're saying, okay, that means commodities are going to go up. Absolutely. And the markets are, you know, discounting mechanisms. Obama is a disaster. He's got to be one of the worst presidents ever. But it doesn't mean he's not going to win tonight. Because the establishment's happy with what he's doing. The establishment is making billions and billions of dollars uh, on the back of Obama. In the, look, the, the Wall Street's going to pay itself another $140 billion in bonuses this year. I'm sure it'll be a record year in bonuses like it's been for every year of Obama's administration, you know, give or take. It's, uh, they've always made out like bandits. So the, why would you vote against that? Wow. Uh, Max, I'm here asking a lot of the questions. Uh, Max Kaiser of the uh, Kaiser Report on RT, also BBC, um, you name it. I mean, he's got shows in England. He's got shows worldwide. Other, t other points that I'm not bringing up that you think are important for the audience? I think this is a complete waste of everyone's time. It, 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 if you, it, in the context of looking ahead to what's going to be the reality starting tomorrow and the next day, which is that the banks and the economies are crumbling rapidly and everything we've been saying is only picking up speed and, and the people need to be aware of that. Alex Jones here with a message that could revolutionize health in this country. Going back about a year and a half ago, I began to learn about the incredible health effects of Longevity products. Aaron Dykes lost 92 pounds. We're going to show you some before and afters. Aaron, break down what happened, your story. I've worked really hard with diet and exercise to try to lose weight, but I just didn't get the results. It just didn't happen. Then I saw what you were doing with InfoWarsTeam.com. I wasn't even trying to lose weight, but I got it because I wanted to feel better energy. I wanted that nutrition. Didn't even understand how that could kickstart my own weight loss goals, but the products did that for me. I found myself suddenly losing weight, more energetic, wanting to exercise, wanting to eat the right foods. And they don't even advertise it as weight loss. I want to challenge our radio listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com, sign up as a distributor, and get wholesale pricing discounts at InfoWarsTeam.com. As we saw in Katrina, and as we are watching now in New York and New Jersey, the federal government can't and won't help you in a crisis. FEMA ran out of water and MREs in days. Electricity is still off to over one million people. The Red Cross, who is quick to beg for money, is now slow to react. Don't put it off any longer. Get prepared today. The InfoWars Shop is the largest distributor of ProPure water filter systems. And now, get 15% off your ProPure order with the promo code WATER15. While you're on InfoWarsShop.com, check out these other great preparedness items. The Aquapod Kit lets you store up to 65 gallons of water in your bathtub. The Pocket Socket provides you with manual electricity for small electronics like your cell phone. The Life Straw is great for your bug out bag. And check out our complete line of inner food products for great tasting and nutritionally dense foods that have a great shelf life. If you are looking to secure your home in a crisis, you can order Strategic Relocations the film, a great companion to the book Strategic Relocations 3rd Edition and The Secure Home by Joel Skousen. When the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has already passed. Get prepared now, so if a crisis strikes your home, you and your family will be secure. Go to InfoWarsShop.com and don't forget the promo code WATER15. We have been robbed. Globalism has been a curse to this country. Everything the globalists are doing worldwide is about making you dependent. I'm getting storable food. You need it because it's the only insurance that you can 100% use. I have, you know, family that are veterans and people like that uh, who can't live off their Social Security, who are disabled and things. And that's why I've bought so much food. Charity starts at home. 
I promote what I believe in 100%. And I believe in what they're doing 100%. And the globalists do not want you to be self-sufficient. I hope you will take action. Get the six free meals when you pay for the shipping so that you can eat them and see that it's quality. That's why I chose eFoods. I did my research. I tested a bunch, bought a bunch. The other stuff was like cardboard or filled with MSG or made in China. So bottom line, folks, eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. Follow the banners at InfoWars.com or call the toll-free number 800-409-5633. That's 800-409-5633. introduction, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. Well, I could ask a lot of questions, Doc, but I love to throw this at you. Out of the gates, what's on your mind first up? The election or is it a diversion? Uh, what's happening in the uh, economic realm? What's on Dr. Roberts' mind? Well, you know, what's on my mind right now is that it doesn't really matter from the standpoint of the American people which of these two people, two candidates went because they're both for war, they're both for the police state, and all the two parties are fighting over Alex is who gets to be the whore for the interest groups. If you get to be, the party that wins the election gets to be the whore for the Israel lobby, for Wall Street, for the military security complex, for agribusiness, for oil, uh, timber, and mining. And that's very lucrative because uh, when you're political, when you get through serving those people, they reward you with huge incomes and wealth. And so the two parties are really fighting over who gets to be the prostitute. And the American people are deluded. They think there's some kind of policy difference between the parties. There's not any policy difference. From that standpoint, it doesn't matter who wins. It's already evolving into a dictatorship. And expanding on that, Ron Paul said, look, if I got elected president, I'm not going to use these unconstitutional powers, so don't expect me to be able to fix things. And that's the old thing of Gandalf when they offer him the ring of power. He says, don't offer me that. It would be turned to bad. I mean, obviously, if you were president, you wouldn't use the dictatorial powers. The problem is the bureaucracy itself behaves in a dictatorial way right now. I mean, we see this with sheriff's deputies and bureaucrats and code enforcers and you know, we see uh, census takers busting down doors and raping women. I mean, that's what's so scary about a tyranny is it empowers all these other little scumlings yeah. to do whatever they want. And here's what's different between America and Germany or Russia or Cambodia or any of these tyrannies. There are 170 million gun owners, roughly. There are 400 million guns of you know newer manufacturer the last 50 years. If just 1% of those people stand up, you're talking about a million seven hundred thousand people. And I'm here to tell you, a lot of people uh, uh, are not looking for trouble, but if stuff really unravels, they're not going to FEMA camps, they're not going to work centers, they're, they're just going to die at their house, so they're going to go out and find some trouble. I don't, I don't think the bureaucrats understand their real threat's not going to be Russia and China. If they really push this over the edge with all these desperate people, I think they're taking the restraint of constitutionalists and veterans and people as weakness when I think it's really the opposite. Uh, the average person out there who is really informed understands the average cop or military security person is just a minion that isn't their enemy, but it doesn't matter. If that minion of the system marches out against you, well then it's a whole nother ball of wax. And I'm looking at civil war in this country, Dr. Roberts, if this continues. I, well, I don't know about that, Alex. I think what I think the people are a long ways from that. They'll have to be hungry first and oppressed in ways that they that they realize. 
And I think where the trouble will come will be they're going to run into trouble with Iran, with Russia, with China, and with the dollar. And I think that's going to overwhelm their power and their confidence. And uh, I think that's how this comes comes to an end. I don't think it will be from gun owners or civil war, but I don't really know. I mean, you may be right. And on this Friday edition, a few days after the election, we have a couple of uh, minutes here, or 30 minutes or so, with Congressman Ron Paul. Uh, Congressman, I don't know how you do it, uh, holding up under something that a young man couldn't do, but uh, great job getting the message of liberty out during the campaign. Well, it's, it's been a lot of fun and tedious, and of course, at times frustrating. But uh, what really uh, gets me going or keeps me going is what everybody knows is that I have identified with a lot of the young people, as you have. You know, I'm going to the campuses, and that's why I've never dwelled on D.C. D.C. is important, but D.C. is a reflection of what the gen next generation is going to be thinking about and realizing. So that's where I'm optimistic. Uh, Washington is as big as best as ever. But there's, there's reason to believe that uh, all the freedom organizations, your radio show, we're all making some progress and more in the last five years than we did probably in the previous 20 years. Absolutely. Uh, look, uh, Bev Harris, who is, as you know, uh, one of the top voting fraud experts in the country, she's nonpartisan. She says a lot of Romney votes didn't get counted. They called states long before they should have. That article's up at Infowars.com. I know it looks like you're a spoiled sport if you talk about election fraud, but it's been certified and proven over and over again. Uh, I don't so much see it as a mandate for collectivism that Obama got reelected, I see it as a mandate that people have been dumbed down and that Romney wasn't really a, 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 somebody who was really speaking out against Obama. But when you make the statement, Congressman, uh, that the U.S. election shows were far gone, uh, can you elaborate on that? Well, yes, the subject comes up because the, the, the big talk now is a fiscal cliff. And uh, in many ways, uh, I work on the assumption that we've sort of gone off the cliff. Uh, nobody realizes because we haven't hit the bottom and we don't know what the ramifications are. Uh, but in the, in the election, what I was thinking about at that time was that one of the things that Obama was able to do was play on fear, fear of those people, you know, in the Rust Belt uh, who are used to artificially high wages and jobs and bailouts. And he played on that. So in, in many ways, it was those individuals in uh, Ohio and Detroit, Michigan and Wisconsin are saying, hey, you protect me, take care of me, make sure my checks are coming. And I said it's not a whole lot different than the way they line up on the streets in Greece. You know, don't cut anything. And the people who are on the dole won it. So in that way, that side of the argument won. Uh, the, but I'm not as, as down on what happened in the election because 12 million decided not to bother, which isn't all that bad, you know, because they decided they looked at Romney and they, and they looked at Obama and said it's not worth the effort, and they know this whole system is rigged against us if we try a third party. So they just said the heck with it. And, uh, but I think those are our supporters. I mean, I think those are people who probably listen to you and uh, pay attention to me, but, but they, they know that, uh, you know, the current system isn't working. But I think we're the majority. There's no doubt in my mind, if you take the people who uh, have dropped out a while ago or dropping out now and not enthusiastic, wouldn't vote for either of them, I think they're listening more to what we're saying. That was my next question. I saw some of the breakdowns uh, in areas of Florida and other places where there were massively less Republican voters just not voting uh, this time around than voted four years ago uh, with uh, McCain and Obama. And I looked at the numbers and, and the demographics. I think you're alluding to this, so I'd like you to expand on it, Congressman. Congressman Ron Paul joins us if you just tuned in live here on this Friday edition. That it is the Ron Paul libertarian constitutional true America uh, group that was snubbed and demonized and attacked and drummed out by the Rockefeller blue blood Republicans that just didn't vote. I mean, I know that I ended up not voting because of that, Richard Reeves. 
uh, one of my crew members who was one of your delegates, he ended up not doing that. Most Republicans and conservatives and libertarians I talked to just said, hey, let Obama come in and bring in total communism. Let's let everybody really see what this is like. No more of these fake Republicans uh, who are basically exactly the same, Republican in name only, uh, counterfeit conservatives. Uh, I mean, what I'm hearing is people are voting by buying four or five million guns a month, and uh, they're done. Yeah. Now, people are hunkering down, and they, they realize this. And uh, the big question, the big job we had is uh, uh, when the major crisis hits, the really big one, is, uh, you know, there will be a revamping. There's always a, a restoration of a currency that people can at least trust for a while or are told to trust it, and they have to have uh, restored confidence in, in a, a government. And right now, though, the contest is between us who would like very limited uh, federal government and a lot of self-government uh, versus those who want to march onward. Not to – see, I don't, I don't usually use the word carelessly, but onto uh, a form of – you know, just socialism, but it's a form of socialism that's called fascism, and that's what why I dread the combination of big government and big corporations. And when you look at that, whether it's medical care or the media or the military, the uh, the uh, Goldman Sachs and the banking industry, that that's uh, that's who's uh, been in charge, and they're going to hang on tenaciously. So our challenge is uh, is very great, but our numbers are growing by leaps and bounds, and people. Because of the crisis, they're looking elsewhere because they know that uh, these economic policy of Keynesian uh, and the inflation of the Fed, uh, they're, they're not uh, you know, confident that they can do it again. There's a term out there, Obamaism or Obamnaism, basically communism, and you just said it as someone who studied history and also uh, finance and economics. They're always saying, oh, we have the choice of fascism or socialism in the extreme of socialism, communism. But Stalin and Hitler had a pact together. Uh, they divided Poland in half. Stalin admired Hitler and adopted much of what he did. Uh, uh, Mussolini and Hitler were actually national socialists. Uh, they socialized things for the general public, but allowed mega robber barons to have a centralized fascist economy. And historically, that's what I've seen, just studying history myself, is you get a socialism or communism on the bottom with powerful uh, exempt elites or empires that are uh, you know, incredibly wealthy with the general public fighting over scraps. And... Uh, I mean, this is the type of real definition we need out there, that liberalism we hear about is not liberal at all, like Thomas Jefferson, a real liberal. This is a virulent authoritarianism. Yeah, and uh, when these changes occur, if, if uh, uh, national socialism is defeated, they have no trouble becoming uh, uh, becoming communists. In the, in, the, in the communists in Russia, the KGB became uh, sort of... Uh, you know, corporatists, you know, all of a sudden that was amazing to me that in five years that you had these billionaires, and then I found out that it was the KGB that ended up owning most of the big businesses. They did have more of a market economy, and you can't complain about the Soviets falling apart, but really much, many of the same people stayed in charge, so they're very flexible. They want power and money and control, and what they call it is secondary to that. Sure, and again, the proper definition of Obamunism, which I hope everybody adopts, is the high-tax, big-government, economic, growth-killing, centrally-planned economic regime favored by Barack Hussein Obama, essentially the same as communism and socialism. Uh, and, I mean, if this isn't Obamunism, I don't know what is, Congressman. When you talk about we're already over the cliff, when you talk about, uh, you know, we are basically far gone, that's not negativity. That's that's historically being being accurate in 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 my well researched view. But can you flesh it out? You know, you talked a few years ago about yeah. something big is coming. Break down where we're going because I've seen numbers even in the Wall Street Journal that our per capita government debt, individual debt, is far above Greece's even. And right. so, how you expect historically, you've predicted so much of this. What you expect to now unfold as we see the economy imploding just days after Obama gets back in. I was always impressed with uh, talking with the young people on the campuses and telling them how bad I see things. And then the comments afterwards when I would talk to them, they say, you're the only one that gives me hope. And they come across very optimistic. And I think knowing the truth and what to do and offering them something else 
uh, is a reason for uh, for optimism. But my point about uh, us being over the cliff means that I don't work on the assumption that all of a sudden there's going to be an agreement in December or January and they're going to solve spending and deficit problems and the entitlement. Nah, that, that, that's, that's not going to happen. So, so we're over the cliff in, in that sense and we're falling off. We just don't know the entire consequences of this. So I see the consequence being that uh, there will be more and more debt and more and more inflation. The money will finally come out and start bidding up uh, the prices even even more so. And uh, today I wrote a little thing commenting on the Germans wanting to get their gold uh, holdings out of the Fed holdings up in New York. And I said, maybe this is the crack in the seams where they're losing confidence uh, of the uh, supremacy of the dollar as well as the supremacy of our political system. You know, we went through depressions, we went through world wars, and we always came out on top. You know, people said, and even now, I mean, we're still on top uh, in the sense that when they have a crisis day in the market, people will still buy those stupid government bonds, you know, because they don't know where else to go. But I think this idea that the Germans are saying, hey, do you really have our gold? And what if they find out that gold isn't there? What if they decide to go along with our concerns and check and say, tell us where our gold is as well? And that, to me, will combine with the recognition that the war that we took upon ourselves, the drone war and the uh, unwarranted continuous bombing and this global war on terrorism is going to uh, be something that we can't handle because uh, just having a lot of nukes on submarines can't solve those problems. And, uh, and if we get weakened with our dollar and financially, uh, I think we'll be a paper tiger uh, militarily. And then I see what would happen then is a movement for all these, all the countries that we have uh, belittled and badgered and, uh, and you know, bombed. They're going to love to come piling on us, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if in the next year or two this whole thing about what Germany's talking about might not be in the opening salvo on uh, an, an international attack on our dollar. And Congressman, as you know, there's a bunch of other countries, a lot of Latin American countries led by Venezuela that are pulling their gold out of England, uh, out of the euro, out of the U.S. as well. Uh, and so we really see uh, the battle lines being drawn. We see the Chinese trying to get away from uh, treasuries. Uh, and then here at home, um, we did a national Harris poll uh, for Infowars.com that just came out yesterday, a scientific poll. 35% of Americans would accept the electric shock bracelets that the TSA actually with Homeland Security two years ago looked at adopting where we all wear taser bracelets. Uh, that way we're all safe. I'm not joking, folks. And uh, uh, also 30% or nearly a third in the same Harris poll said they would accept a TSA body cavity search. Uh, and this is not satire, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Congressman, you yourself have complained of the uh, abuse at their hands. Uh, and now we've seen other Congress people uh, complain of it, and it's getting more intense. Uh, what is your take on the 1.6 billion bullets now being purchased by Homeland Security? What is your take on the TSA now on the highways, uh, all of this uh, expansion of the police state? Well, it's all preparation. They say just in case there's an emergency, we have to restore order. Uh, some of them are probably sincere in the sense that we can't control events. They can, didn't control events. Uh, they didn't know when the storm was coming. But if it does occur, you know, they want to order is, is what they want. They want order, and therefore uh, it doesn't prove that they have something absolutely planned on paper exactly what they're going to do and when. But uh, they also know the fragility of the system like we know. We know it's fragile. And we know that uh, whether it's a storm or a financial crisis, that uh, people, people are going to get unruly. And, and my argument is that it is a moral issue, but uh, there's a lot of morality that needs to be taught because people who give out government services, uh, are, they believe themselves to be very moral. Just like, you know, the thug on the street, he doesn't necessarily lay awake at night for what he has done wrong. Uh, but I think as the government breaks down and can't provide the services, that immorality will be expanded in, with the people. And the people will say, well, the government has to do this, and now they're not forthcoming. So therefore, I am going to take what is rightfully my own. And I think our enemies know that, and they'll say, well... Uh, even though 
though they have pretended that they were going to take care of uh, everybody who needs help, they're really there to control them. So this is why I think they lay these plans, but it is rather scary, uh, especially since the founders didn't even want a national police force. We shouldn't have any federal agents other than our military to have guns. And now we have hundreds of thousands, I don't know the exact number, I know it's over 100,000 federal agents who are carrying guns, and uh, that number is going to continue to expand. Uh, it, it looks like they have a lot of guns if they're buying a lot of bullets. So basically, do you agree with, uh, I mean, my boil down that they know the collapse is coming, they're digging in for it, while telling the public it's bad to basically be a prepper. I mean, why doesn't government want us to be preppers 11 days without power now in many areas of new york and new jersey and all government is doing is frustrating the efforts it's churches and citizens that did prepare that are actually holding things together and giving their neighbors food some estimates right. are more than 60 percent made no preparation uh they're they're just begging the government uh that's the obama disaster plan is to have just i guess a can a bucket you beg beg for government handouts from yeah well, that that will come to an end. I don't know if you saw it, but it, this this picture should be used by all of us to show exactly how efficient they are. Did you see the picture of the FEMA office up in New York? They had the the storm, then the and then the uh, northeast northeastern come in, and the snow came, and and the, and the sign says FEMA office closed due to weather. Yes, I did I, see that. Did you see that thing? In fact, guys, pull it up. FEMA office closed due to weather. It's all over the place. We can show isn't people watching that, on TV. Isn't that something else? That is so symbolic of the idiocy. And, you know, people always, you know, they went after me for having condemned FEMA for so long and voting against it in spite of the fact that I took care of a, of a coastal a, a district. But I won that argument over with my constituents because I did more to help them get around the bureaucracy and get through the bureaucracy. And when the police wouldn't, the, or the feds wouldn't allow them to go in and get their property, we would go to bat for them. So the, the, the people themselves are a little bit further ahead than, than the politicians and the media people think we are. they are. Absolutely. Uh, Congressman, moving quickly now in the last 10 minutes we have left with you, um, what do you expect Obama to do now that he's got four more years? In his, in, in his victory speech, he talked about how we're a collective, we're not individuals. Uh, very creepy kind of you didn't build it statements again. Uh, he's got constituents literally that just beg uh, incoherently for their free Obama phones. I'm not trying to be mean. It's just very, very sad what dependency does to people. Uh, and now they are just racing ahead saying, you in... A gun treaty, and now Diane Feinstein, it's on record, says she physically wants California style, not just a ban on sale of semi-autos. They want you to turn them in. I mean, that could cause a civil war, Congressman. People are not turning their guns in. No, that, that's right. And uh, you know, politically, they generally back off on that. You know, in the last several presidential elections, even this one, Obama didn't campaign on stricter gun control. That doesn't mean he won't work for them, but he knows politically it's not popular. And I think those are the, uh, you know, drawing the lines in the sand. If they knock on the door, they want your gold, and want your gun, uh, I don't think people are going to give them up. But that doesn't put them out of business to harass us. Uh, they're going to uh, maybe uh, put more limits on buying ammunition, uh, you know, more taxes on it. They're going to uh, make it more difficult for you to sell your gold or use your gold and maybe have 50, 70 percent tax on your gold. Uh, and and they, they will do this. But that will just drive the underground economy, uh, you know, uh, to a much greater height. Uh, but no, they're gonna, they, they will continue to do that. So I don't know how this treaty will pan out. I keep always wanting to be, you know, a bit optimistic and say, they can't possibly do that. That's going against the grain. So once again, it's going to be up to us to uh, reach people and not reach sure. our hardcore friends. I mean, that's why we have to reach out to a new audience as well and say that uh, they have to join us in these efforts. And uh, that's I'm hopeful for that because we do have the Internet, you know. And, and uh, I know they're trying to attack us there, but we're still uh, – able to get more information right now we're we're riding high on our internet uh, abilities compared to uh, 
the three major in the TV went. Absolutely. Are you concerned about the internet kill switch, cyber security, and all these calls to reinstate the fairness doctrine for talk radio? Yeah, I, I am concerned, but I also hope that technology is so big and so broad that uh, you know the, the private market is able to overcome any obstacles. So, and I don't understand exactly how all that works. Sure. But, uh, I hope I'm not naive to think that people can, uh, you know, develop their own protection. But ultimately, the only thing that counts, whether it's guns, the gold, or the internet, or war, is to awaken sure. the people to say. We're not going to put up with this. Uh, governments reflect the people. Sure. Expanding on that in the limited time we have left, going to move quick now, Congressman, because I want okay. to get to several other points here. Uh, I'm very glad to see that you've taken back over Campaign for Liberty now that you're not running for president and about to finish up there with Congress. Uh, so, so congratulations on that. Very exciting to see uh, you in there uh, because I know you know like nobody else can uh, drive it right uh, with all the grassroots. What do you make of the Republicans and this new spin that Republicans need to get uh, more uh, socialistic and become the Democratic Party to win when the reason the Republicans have lost, in my view, uh, is that they've gotten so unconstitutional, people are just standing down. That's what the numbers show. Uh, what's your take yeah. on this talking point we're seeing that Republicans should just adopt Mao Zedong's views? Yeah, it's just diversion because from where we are in this country today and when we look at our political system, we only have one party, so we're already there. It's just tone and rhetoric is slightly different. So, yeah, they may move a little bit in that direction. And what they say has nothing much to do with what they do. And uh, that's why, uh, you know, we have to watch what they do and where they go. Uh, but uh, going in that direction, of course, would be the obviously wrong thing. And I think it's becoming more clear because we don't know the exact numbers of support that we had in the campaign, but it's bigger than they gave us credit for. And uh, I, I keep thinking of those 12 million that refused to vote. Some of them, uh, maybe a large number of those are sympathetic to us. Uh, so therefore, you know, our, our numbers outside uh, are significant. And uh, I still work on the assumption that it, it is that attitude that eventually sure. prevails. I mean, when, when the attitudes changed in the Soviet system, uh, communism, you know, fell apart because it had no strength left and the people no longer supported it. Absolutely. They can only steal from one group to give it to the other. Uh, and as it gets clearer and clearer that big government doesn't work, it'll finally implode. That's why we just got to keep working, keep getting the word out. Uh, Congressman, is it time for people to apologize to you and myself and others for talking about the Bilderberg Group and the Davos New World Order crowd? Because now in the Financial Times of London, Reuters, AP, they say there is a global government, technocrats, mega bankers, they're going to run the countries, they're going to appoint the leaders, they're going to get us at a fiscal cliff, hold us hostage. I want to play you a brief clip here from the Kudlow Report where they announced we're slaves to international bankers. Here's that clip, Congressman Paul. So mostly what they do is hold summits. I think that right now the question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? Jim, Jim Urio, you say we've got some downside here, a correction in the markets. Fine. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Aren't we all just counting on the fact that there's a Bernanke put, put and that we won't go any lower than, say, 5% uh, down from here? Of course we are. All right, let's stop look there. At the economic and then all four guests agree we're under world government. They're bragging we're under world government, but then I hear we're not supposed to talk about it, Congressman. Isn't this our strength and not our weakness that we've been right about this? Instead, now we're being told we should not talk about this? Well, obviously, they, we should talk about it. The fact that they don't want us to means that we really have to talk about it. I've written a speech that uh, hopefully I get enough time to give on the house floor a farewell speech, and I listed five major problems that we face. And one of those five is international government. You know, the, the fact that it's the UN, WTO, IMF, and, and, uh, and, and the World Bank taking over, deciding when we go to war and, and how to deal with trade. Well, the, the whole works. So I would say giving up our national sovereignty is bad enough that we've given up individual and state sovereignty to our federal government, but I see the giving up of our national sovereignty to internationalism, and uh, they, they claim, well, they need the WTO to have free trade. They need the WTO to protect the powerful 
trading special interests, the internationalists. So, uh, yes, that is a big issue. But don't hold your breath on getting your apology because I don't think Chris Matthews is going to call you or Rush Limbaugh is going to call you in the next week or two. Absolutely. To well, we only got a minute and a half left. Congressman, I hope you can come back again soon. I don't want to kill you, literally, you know, making you work so hard. But thank you so much uh, for coming on the broadcast. Uh, in closing, uh, we just want to thank you for all you've done. And can you talk about also the vindication uh, that they now admit all, all over the news, L.A. Times, you name it, that al-Qaeda was put in by the U.N. and NATO and our government in Libya, now in Syria. Uh, we'll fade the music down for a moment. Uh, and, and, and is now blowing back on us again. Your your comment on that. Yeah, well, it shouldn't surprise any of us because I think when that, uh, you know, started... Uh, and just at the very beginning, I made some projections on that. And before you knew it, uh, the weapons and the support we were given to certain groups were turned against us. So it's, uh, but it, I don't have to be a genius. I mean, you don't have to be a genius to figure out. Very it. well said, All Congressman. Said. You know, I didn't push too hard to get Ron Paul on the last six months or so because I knew they were just had him all over the place working hard. But I also knew that, uh, you know, he'd said, I want to come on every month, but that the messages weren't all getting passed on. And I can't blame Ron Paul for that. So I was like, you know what? Ron Paul ever wants to come back on. He'll contact us. Uh, and we got word through Lou Rockwell. He liked to come on. So it was great. And Ron Paul's like, hey, I hadn't been on a while. I hadn't had me on. So it was great having him on. Uh, and uh, he was also saying, hey, you know, you know, I heard, you know, some folks saying that you might not be too happy with some stuff. And I meant to get to that. So I'll just get to it now here on air as an addendum that we'll tack on to the video for radio listeners that we'll post tonight uh, of this because we also stream video of it if you're a radio listener. <clears throat> I hold Ron Paul and Campaign for Liberty to a higher standard because because they've always been non-compromised. And I've been, I, I've, I've been critical of Jesse Benton and some of his decisions. But you can call that armchair quarterbacking, but I've been in there helping the campaign from day one for 17 years. I mean, you know, Ron Paul's district used to come right up to South Austin. You know, I've been interviewing Ron Paul for 17 years. Ron Paul never compromises. Ron Paul is a great guy that I totally you know, agree with, literally on 99% of things. Uh, but I meant to get to this with him on or off air, but I didn't have a chance because we had to go on air and then go off air. So since he brought it up to me off air, I'll just get it on record here. He said, yeah, a few people, you know, you know, in the campaign and stuff said that, you know, you were being critical. But he goes, I, I know that's not true. Alex Jones, you know, has always been a stalwart supporter. And I said, yeah, let me just be clear. Jack Hunter, let's put it on screen, wrote articles saying we shouldn't be critical of the Bilderberg Group. And it was in syndicated columns. It was in the Charleston City paper and others. Clearly pointed at yours truly this year at Bilderberg, saying that it was stupid to talk about the New World Order in Bilderberg when they're announcing it. Ron Paul's been proven right. I've been proven right. So that's my point. And uh, then I'm sure guys like that then go to Ron Paul and say, oh, Alex is attacking you to drive a wedge so that Ron Paul then thinks I don't like him. Ron Paul's not stupid, Jack. Okay? And listen, Jack, I understand. I mean, let's put him on screen. I got a photo of him. I'm not Jack Hunter's enemy. And it's one thing if Rand wants to go, you know, meet with the uh, founder of, um, founder of um, you know, a bunch of online banking systems like PayPal, Peter Thiel, who is Bilderberg. I'm not against actually meeting high-powered people to try to convince them. As we gain more steam, as we become stronger and stronger, uh, as we try to contend, we will be approached. I've been approached by billionaires. I've been approached by top movie stars. I've been approached by two-star generals. I've been approached by defense contractor chairman. Okay, and I've had conversations with them. When something's off record, unless it's criminal what they're telling you, it's off record. I, I, I wear a journalist hat. I wear a commentator hat. I wear uh, a journalist hat. I wear a uh, ranter hat entertainer hat. Sometimes I do things that are entertaining just for fun, you know, skits and things. I wear a lot of hats. I'm a complex guy, renaissance man, you could say. I mean, I'm proud of the fact I do a lot of things, not all of them well, but I, I try a lot of things. But humans are renaissance creatures. So that said, uh, you know, obviously it, it, it's heady for Jack Hunter and, uh, and uh, you know, to now see uh, Ron Paul's former chief of staff for the campaign, Jesse Benton, now working for the senator from Kentucky, not Rand Paul. Uh, but the other one, 
And so, okay, guys, great. You're big, high-powered Republicans now springboarding out of, the, out of the Ron Paul revolution. Here's the deal. I'm with the constitutional libertarian movement. I'm not with go toady after mainline Republicans. I'm trying to change mainline Republicans and Democrats. I'm sticking to my guns because I know that's the right path. I'm not going to compromise.